What's going on guys? There is no real intro to this. Today I've got my boy Wayne Classic on the line with me. In the future we're going to put his face somewhere on the screen. But for now we got this, where is it at? Uh, right here. This dope little uh, talk button thing. I've got him in Discord with me. And so you'll be able to see his face light up when he's speaking. Uh, Wayne, tell the people what's up, man. Yo, what's going on? Um, I'm just, I appreciate you having me on and excited to um get into this i'm a do i need to intro myself i'm a producer and artist um predominantly in the christian space and i've been producing for many years and um love jesus you don't want to say that number do you oh yeah what is the number like 15 years maybe 15 to 20 it's been a while gotta get i was a kid get get this man a a medal yeah <laughs> dope yeah so i wanted to have wayne on here and hopefully this can become like a casual thing where we just do this a lot because there's really no rhyme or reason to my channel i just talk about what i want to talk about and you and me talk quite a bit about just i mean all kind of stuff really um i just did my episode on microphones price points of microphones big myths and misconceptions with microphones knowing when to upgrade, justify people justifying other purchases rather than upgrading the sound of the music through their gear. We really just hit a bunch of different case scenarios. I brought up an example of the lighting with my camera and how a small investment with that saved me a lot of pain and heartache, but it also took me so long to do it that by the time I did it, I felt like a fool for not having invested in myself yet again in this other area because I didn't think it was important. Um, on the subject of microphones, um, I'm kind of just going to throw a bunch of questions at you and you can answer them in any length, uh, that you'd like, but what microphone did you start off using in your studio gear? Now I know you're a producer, but I'm sure at some point you picked up a mic. If so, why did you pick it up and which one was it? So, um, first answer, my, the, my first answer that came to mind when you asked that question is I remember uh, when we first started recording um, in high school, I used a uh, computer microphone. You remember like those old, it wasn't even like USB. a USB headset type of thing? It wasn't even USB. Oh, you're talking was, the red jack it, joints. Yeah, with like the pins. And, yeah. Yes. It was, yeah. Oh, no, actually, no. It was, a, it was like an eighth inch um, like headphone connector yes. one. Yep, and we would uh, tape it to the wall and stand in front of it because we, I don't know why we did that. Um, we could have just held it. To feel but, real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like a recording group. So yeah, that was like the trenches. And then um, the mic that I got, like a first official mic, was called the M Audio Sputnik. And it was, it Ooh, is. What was that? It, it is, actually. I still use it. Um, a... Omni, it has three modes, so it has like your cardioid, omni, directional, and then what's the other one? Cardioid, yeah. Cardioid, the, was, omni, bidirectional. I think it's just bidirectional. That might have well, been. Hold on, is. how much was this mic, Wayne? So it is a thousand dollars. <laughs> he said <mic>. so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a it was a thousand back in the day. It was it was a thousand, but the homie worked at Guitar Center. So it was like, what is this like uh, a conference call, Mike? <laughs> no, it's a it, it's like uh, I'll I'll have, we'll have to like post it or something. But no, it's, I gotta I mean, see it's, this. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty legit. I still use it to this day. And um, yeah, you record I mean, like it is like by definition a recording microphone. Yeah, it's a condenser condenser recording mic. That's with the crazy. with the tube. Yeah. How much did you wind up getting it for? Um, I think at the time it. It was like majorly marked down because of the discount to like like two hundred or something like that. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Wow! And so I've been using it ever since. That's, that's no that so that's the mic you use today. Yeah, that's the mic I use to this day. I was so, I was thinking about um, investing in the slate stuff so I can use like the modeling mm -hmm. um, mics, but uh, no, yeah, the emulation. Now, yeah, that's what I still use. That's crazy. So back then, why did, were you trying to, because for those of you who don't know, Wayne produces and he raps, but he mostly markets himself as a producer first. Um, so what was the necessity back then for the mic just to have it? Or were you trying to rap back then? 
I was trying to rap back then. It I I've, I've okay. been doing the same thing since I started music. Uh the the journey was um I heard college drop out and I was like I want to produce and then I'm like all right cool I made beats. Now who's going to rap to these and then so me and some friends decided to start start rapping. Was co- college dropout was the first one, right? Yep, his first one. I was just yeah. listening back to that and I was like, man, there are so many hits on this, but man, the mixing of that album was buns. Yeah, yeah. Like when yeah. you listen to it sonically, like in yep. the progression of his artwork, you're like, mm-hmm. dang, that sounded like it was recorded in like a New At York flat. Yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> but yeah. uh, yeah. yeah, no no doubt. Shout outs to Ye on that. On the subject of mics, I've been, I actually talked to uh, another a uh, guy that I met um, this past weekend and he he's an artist and I was telling him what I tell all artists that um, mics are so affordable now and studio equipment so affordable, especially if you have a halfway reliable computer that um, you should not be waiting on getting in the studio anymore in 2023. Like there's, oh, there's no excuse. Um, but then the, all- in- the inverse happens though, where it's like, because it's so easy to record now, yeah. People think that just because they have the entry level gear that mm-hmm. they're ready for radio, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's yeah. like it's like on one hand, it's amazing because there is no if you're still, which I can't even imagine this. If you're still the guy or girl in 2023 saying to yourself, "Man, I just I'm waiting on stacking up some paper so I can get my home studio," if you're still that girl or guy. That is just crazy because it's like (laughs) it's like not even a fraction of a paycheck or like a couple months of a season of saving up or doing a little extra work. And you now have a laptop uh, interface and a microphone for under a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Like uh, recording today is super budget friendly. But I feel like a lot of the the issue now is most people (laughs) have the mic and interface. Um they're, what they're struggling with is like the – okay, so I see a couple different things. I see the tug of, man, I need mixing. Mm-hmm. Wow, it costs a lot of money to hire an engineer. Man, studio time costs a lot. So if I want to get a better sound, I can't get it. Um, I have a DAW and I know how to record in it, but I don't really know how to use all these plugins and stuff. Right, right. I, how who's gonna show me what to do and do i have enough in my daw then there's the well i have an entry level mic like is it a is it really a good mic or is it actually a bad mic um what's this stuff about room treatment you know i've watched youtube videos where the guy's telling me no one has to treat a room it's right. just a, a few steps, and then I do those steps, and it doesn't work. And then one guy's telling me spend a hundred bucks on eggshells and wrap the whole room in them, and that did nothing for me. Or my friend tried this, and it never worked. So there's like the, a lot of these like financial and wisdom knowledge based like shortcomings. Yeah. Um, and then there's just a lot of information out there that's like highly contextual, where it's like. If you're not that guy in that city in that room with that budget with those plugins, like yeah. their advice is generally trash. Yeah. Because they're they're yeah. not speaking from a broad knowledge standpoint where they've seen multiple sources, got a lot of experience with multiple gear. They've gone through this very fun. narrow path and believe that they've figured out some laws of the land that just are universally true or yeah. they're just in the world of content creation so it just happens to be something they think they're qualified to talk about and that adds to the saturation of content out there as well um i know for me like that's crazy you said you've had the mic the whole time because one of the segments i've talked about is like the longevity of equipment mm-hmm. you know most equipment will last a lifetime so that, yeah. that that part is really dope because it's not like, okay, I got to get the $100 mic now and then the $500 mic and then three, five years, I'm going to have to go to the $1,000 mic. It's like, no, if you, if pretty much even the beginner gear can last a long time. If you take good care of a mic and interface, yeah. um, I had a, 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 what was the company? The focus, right? It wasn't, what was the, the blue interface? Focus, right? The, the audio box. Yeah, focus right. 
No, that's not focus right. It's uh, um it was a blue interface. Man, oh, it's a, inbox. Gr- no, not inbox. Oh. It might have been something t- tube. Oh man, this is gonna this is gonna rack my brain. But it's called if you Google audio box since you got the computer or whatever, uh-huh. maybe you could find it. But um yeah. it that interface uh lasted me like f- fifteen years or something, and I just sold it. Wow. Um, oh, Presonus. Presonus, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know guys who've had now the Scarlet. I've heard some issues, and but you know, then again, a lot of the like entry level Scarlet owners that I know treat their interface like trash. They, you know, you know they're, Scar- they're, they're, Scarlet. The Scarlets are fire, but the build, yeah. You if you don't if you don't take care of it, you you'll easily break it because it's yeah the build quality at least though like the first gen second gens it the it's not as um sturdy so yeah it can't take a beating at yeah all. it's like it's like if i have a plastic chain around my neck it's like well yeah it could break yeah you know exactly it, it, by definition it's not gonna last longer than the gold chain or whatever but if you're just wearing it it will last a lifetime so it's like if you just leave your interface where it's supposed to be you don't drop it you know, generally speaking, this equipment can last you a lifetime. And just a funny story, like the microphone I use coming up, I started on a a Red Jack audio microphone. You know, the one that sounds like the old principal in the 80s would jump on the intercom and be like, <laughs> uh, you know, Bart Simpson, come to the front office, you know, right. um, or look like an old presidential speech was given on the, the desk mic. Um, and I recorded with that. Uh, and, and I wasn't even like someone who I would say was balling on a budget back then. Like, even though I was, I thought that that's all you needed. Like I, I was so green to audio recording. Yeah. I didn't even know what micro like distinction of microphones. Didn't even know guitar center existed. Yeah. You know, I, I was just like, okay, microphone, you know, and this is back in an era where Amazon wasn't what it was. You couldn't right. just Google and go. So, um, a lot of it was like, I knew no one. I just had to like find something. So I had mm-hmm. the, the Jack mic and then I eventually went over to a USB mic. Mm-hmm. Um, actually no, well, technically it's not really a USB mic. It literally is, but it wasn't for recording. It was like a gaming headset. Right. And I felt so cool because I could like walk around my room and rap and, <laughs> and just record. Yeah. And then, and then I eventually, when I was 16, I bought a $300 Groove Tube 55 mic, which was like amazing. And, and the biggest travesty with my come up is when I was 16, you know, my mom got me the studio monitors. I mm. had the, B, the BX8s. I yep. had the, the GT55. I had... Uh, like a Firewire uh, dope interface back then, multi-channel, but I knew nothing about my DAW, nothing about mixing, nothing about plugins. I'll never forget um, like just the realization that if you don't get your song mixed, your monitors are actually going to reveal how trash the mix actually is. And yeah. back then, because I wasn't mixing at all, like I was like, man, these monitors suck. <laughs> I just they, they're just not producing a good sound at all you matter of fact this microphone sucks matter yeah. of fact this interface sucks and I remember <laughs> just sitting there with like a thousand dollars in gear yeah thinking that the gear was the problem right and it was and it was a a, a, t- a a snowball compounding issue of the songs weren't mixed so frequency clashing messy mixes, muddy vocals coming out of precise truth revealing monitors. I was recording into the microphone, knew nothing about proximity effect and closeness to the mic or, or uh, pop filters, knew nothing about like wiring, um, knew nothing about like bit responses and stuff and like travel rate of the audio to the computer resolution. Yep. resolution. I mean, it was like, and then all that together just created like the best gear in the world creating the worst music because the guy flying the plane had no pilot's license. Yeah. And, um, this and that was, sucks. dude, by the time I figured out how to make the best use of my, my monitors and my microphone, 
it had been like 10, 15 years. I remember mm. it was so embarrassing coming to that realization once I actually did the classes, once I actually did the schooling, once I actually studied the greats and figuring out, oh man, I have never been using my microphone correctly. I have not been mixing my concept of mixing, we think just because we own the DAW and we can hit record, we're mix engineers. No. Mm -hmm. Just because we have presets, we think we're mix engineers. No. I didn't know about room resonance and how that impacted the, my mic recordings. And it's just, there's so many components to it, man. But mm -hmm. um, this is why knowledge is power here. Like, if you know a lot about the gear and about I, this is what I feel if I think if you come from the mix engineer background you have the greatest chance to succeed because you understand how s sound is impacting sound right like you don't need to know what mic is best because you know what EQ is and you know okay this mic sounds like this so these adjustments need to be made here or right. this is room sound this is how we address acoustics whether you're messing with the $100 mic with the $90 interface or or up you're able to make it happen and in my journey I learned that stuff last so mm. it really it, it it now the inverse happened because since I had a lot of ear knowledge of like just listening to a lot of music and perfecting my craft by the time i acquired the knowledge i synthesized at a much higher rate than the average person because i had conceptualized though incorrectly these concepts over many years when i finally did get the knowledge everything kind of clicked overnight um but yeah you know so like I'm just curious with you, with microphone's sake, um, like, is there, have you struggled with anything with microphones? Is there anything like you don't quite understand about them that you're still kind of learning? Um, yeah. is there anything new recently that you've learned in the last five years? that's like changed the way you view your gear on this specifically with the microphone, any recording experiences with vocalists? Yeah. So, um, um, I did have an idea but it just escaped me. I, yeah, I mean, with the microphones, I think one of the biggest challenges for me was always um, balancing the uh, noise floor. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not having enough gain and then having to turn up gain on my interface, but then I'm hearing the room um, and then uh, have balancing dynamics. So if there's a part where I'm trying to perform a take uh, quietly, and then there's one where it's more energy, you know, you have to adjust and adjust how you record. So all of those things, I mean, I'm still figuring it out myself, still learning mm. to this day. Yeah, I. Mm. it's crazy. I was telling people about Audio Test Kitchen. Have you tried that at all? Um, I, I tested it a little bit after you told me about it, but I actually um, need, to, need to check it out again. Yeah, I was just telling people how like, it's so powerful. If I would have had this a long time ago, I would have saved a lot of money on gear because the fact that you can try every single microphone under the sun and hear what it's supposed to sound like, like in the studio, there's mm -hmm. a difference. You know, if you bring a, a, a TLM 103 home, it's not going to sound how you heard it in the studio. Right. And so people get misconceptions about like, cause there's the angle of, well, what room is that mic going in? is going to change the texture and tonal value of that of what that mic's picking up. Yeah. But but the second part about it is like who the vocalist is. Mhm. Mm Pairing the microphone based off of the vocalist and then the third arena is the subjectivity of having a desired outcome. You know, this is like in the realm of the arts, so to speak, because it's like, OK, if you have a guy who's got this dark, husky voice, you might want to be interested in hearing how he might sound on a brighter microphone for that contrast. Mm. You might not get the darker mic. The darker or the brighter mic isn't like um, it's not like law you know what i'm saying like yeah e either choice isn't wrong but then there's like the stylistic choices of like oh i want to have a mic that makes me sound really gritty or mm. i want a mic that's darker because i like eqing and brightness later so there's just so many like interesting components with it and i've always found that like 
uh, audio test kitchen allowed me to like flush out as many ideas as possible before I got to the point of purchase. Mm. Um, and, and balancing that with what YouTube says, you know, all the different people talking about their top five mics and different things like that. Yeah. It allowed me to make a more informed decision. And I think that's like the other key is who are you talking to about gear recommendations? Right. Cause there's even guys like in the industry who I've heard say some like super sub subjective opinions about gear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I only run it through these cables. Oh, I only blah, blah, blah. If you're not doing this, you're not a real engineer. And so it's like, who do you <laughs> trust? So I think it just comes down to like acquire the knowledge, discern the knowledge between each source S try to do your best to like weed out the impurities, so to speak. Mm -hmm. At the at the end of the day, the more work and time that you put into it and experience you put into it, the more the in the informed decision that you have to make at some point is like gonna have uh, less of a probability for error. Right. But every, everyone's subject to error. It's just how much you have to go through. And we just have to be realistic about what to expect. If you've never done this stuff before and you want to try and come out and buy the best mic the first time around, probably not going to happen, buddy. Not unless you are you know somebody who's really been through it. And even then, um, we're talking about art. So someone, someone's opinion, uh, or even though it might be well-informed with truth, Mm -hmm. uh, may not work for you and what your goals are. And it's not their fault for recommending what they recommended yeah. because you might not have communicated what the actual goal is. Right. And yep. maybe you don't even know what the goal is. And that's why, you know, I love when, um, what's that do with think media? Uh, Sean Cannell. I like when he mm -hmm. says, you, Hey man, you just got to pick it up and go, or Hey, you just got to yeah. press record. Yeah. Because yeah. At the end of the day, you do have to do that at some point, but then there's yeah. the wisdom of saying, okay, wait, let me sit back and analyze what I've done thus far. And is it actually time to press record again? Or is it time to like acquire knowledge? Is it time to have somebody else share some game with me? Um, and it's just interesting, but I will say I fell in love with microphones in my mm. journey uh, in the last five years more than ever. Because, uh, man, when you know your gear and you have some tools to make the gear sing, you know, you feel like an antique car collector. <laughs> it's like, man, I know exactly. I can experiment. I can make this how I want it. I could customize it. Yeah. And, um, and I was telling the story about how I finally got to get my dream microphone. Um, and that was like a really cool experience. But um, if it's any encouragement to the audience out there, like – a lot of the most profound things I learned happened from year 15 to 20. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't because it took 15 to 20 years. That's just God's plan for my life. Right. Um, hopefully but, hearing this, it'll speed theirs up. Yeah. Like hopefully for you, it kicks off at year two and you can really just take it farther and farther and farther. But um, it's really made me appreciate musical equipment and the importance of its role in a song maker's life. Mm. Um, because if you're an amateur, what you know about gear, um, I mean, dude, you could see it in the industry, man. Like in CHH, like there's some guys that got like 50 to a hundred thousand monthly listeners and North of that, who you listen to their music and it's like, he don't really know what he's doing, but he's making it work because he's so talented. Right. Um, and then there are some guys who are like no namers, but they make excellent music. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Big Kids album dropped last week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Check it out. <laughs> Check, Check it, it out. Um, yeah. But uh, no, for real, man, like, so everybody's out here just trying to get it, man. But we're just here to share some wisdom with you. Um, Wayne, was there anything else like you wanted to share about, you know, this started off as a microphone conversation, but really I'm just shooting the breeze with you. I'll probably call this conversations with Wayne. <laughs> I might put yeah. a fern, fern behind me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, just to, just to kind of be, bring it back full circle. Like, you know, nonetheless, like you said, there are people that are killing it 
that have a lot of uh, growth to 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 get um, when it comes to audio recording. So, uh, you know, don't let everything that we just discussed discourage you from just jumping in. Like you said, like Sean yeah. Yano says, um, just, just got to press record. And I think um, your audience will appreciate watching the growth as well. So, yeah, do it. Do it. Absolutely. And, and, and like just to piggyback there as well, I would say another thing is like, not everybody has to care as much as I or you care. Um, people can enjoy music for so many different reasons that it doesn't have to be the way we think it should be. Yeah. Even, from, even from a professional standpoint, like somebody can make the, the case that you should always try to make the best music possible. But if in your attempts to do that, you make not a lot of music because you have all these obstacles, then what's better? That you made a ton of music that was just subpar, but people could enjoy it and take it for what it was, or that you only recorded two songs in your life because you needed the $20,000 budget to make it happen. It's like, okay, at some point we need to weigh the odds of like someone's circumstance and the goals that they're trying to get out of making the music. But generally speaking, we always should just be thinking critically seeing what everybody else is doing, being prayerful about it, having conversations with the Lord on it, and asking yourself, where do I want to take it? Yeah. Is is professionalism really important to me? Is business really important to me? Is the sonic character really important to me? Okay, and then just ride with that and be willing to have an open mind to possibly grow in how that's shaped your character and how that's played out. Uh, but either way, be intentional. Yeah. Don't just do something just to do it. You will, and, right. and, and also don't expect to get something out of that way of living. Um, make it what you want to make it and do it in community so that you have some context, some healthy perspective. And then like at the end of the day, like music is for all of us to share. Right. Um, I hate when people say like, well, music is like my therapy and it's like, okay, well, why are you sharing it with me? <laughs> I don't it's like, well, it's like what you really mean to say is like, you like the therapeutic aspect of it. But at the end of the day, your, your, your heart is like, people hear me, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's like, <laughs> that could genuinely be a goal of yours, but I've never seen somebody who is, has like a therapy bend on their music. Um, not like like not relentlessly try to share their music with everybody they know. Um, yep. So so I always say with that being said, like share your music. Um, because if you're making a lot of music and you're sharing a lot of music, you'll get a lot of information <laughs> that you can then use to make better decisions about the creative process and the other processes that you choose to incorporate in your journey with music and make it meaningful and use it to God's glory. Um, you can't do it for God's glory without having intent and purpose. Yep. Um, those things cannot be excluded. Um, even if your intent is to have fun. Um, being That's aware, the intention. Being, yeah, exactly. And there's ways that we will do that and ways that we will not do that because we know it might dishonor the Lord. And that's where the purpose comes in. Um, Mic drop. Yeah. I, we'll get sound effects in here soon. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much for chilling with us. Um, I'm going to go chop all this up and get it ready. Um, let us know if you want me and Wayne to chop about some other topics. I'm going to keep having him back on here. We're going to do a bunch of episodes. I'm just going to bring all my friends in here and, and hopefully we'll get them on the webcam um, soon. But uh, with that being said, we hope you guys have a blessed week and take it easy. Peace.